Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are going to start seam welding the Al Ferrari. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, those of you who missed it, the last couple of weeks, I've been doing all the reinforcing under the car on this uh, on this shell, trying to get, uh, basically tying the front to the back and, uh, and reinforcing the known weak points on this chassis. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. It does help us out. Now, uh, a big way to reinforce any car is seam welding. And uh, basically what that is is, most cars uh, are built to a budget. They're all built to a budget pretty much. And um, so in the factory, they spot weld sheet metal panels together. And uh, this is no different. All of the, uh, the panels are basically spot welded together. And uh, what seam welding does is, and, and what the concept is, is to stitch every inch or so, stitch an inch, leave an inch, stitch an inch, leave an inch, all the way around all of the spot welded seams, which makes it much more rigid, because spot welds are I mean, only a tiny little little speck that's uh, sort of in between a plate, and there can be movement. There's always movement, and seam welding, it just stiffens up the whole chassis into what uh, it, it should be. Pretty much all race cars do this, and um, it's just a time-consuming thing that uh, is not cost-effective for factories to do, which is why they don't do it. And the cars are plenty strong enough for road cars, but maybe not for race cars. Um, but before I get into that, I'm going to go back over, there were a couple of suggestions about the tabs that I put on the top of the roll cage. Um, I'm not overly concerned because they are heavy duty tabs, they're, they're uh, two and a half mil plate, um, but they are liable to flex, although the, the, just as they are, the amount of added rigidity to the chassis is quite high. But um, because it's quick and easy, I'm gonna add a couple of basic little gussets to them. So uh, let's get in there and make some gussets up now and uh, we can call that done and get into seam modding. All right, so I've tacked the gussets in and I will weld them up properly when I get the cage back out of the car. It's easier to get to it. I had to put little bends on the top of the gussets because the, uh, the bolts were very close to the top of the original tabs. So I wouldn't have been able to get a socket or anything on to actually be able to do them up. So I just wanted them up there, even though I'll probably use cap head bolts or something anyway. It just gives it a little bit of space. Okay, and with the gussets uh, looking a lot better, um, I will do a little bit more reinforcing in behind them as well, just to sort of stop the rotation. But I mean, they're massive overkill. In any case, uh, moving forward, before I get onto seam welding, I thought I might do a couple of things that uh, people have been crying at me about for mm, pretty much since I started this car. And that thing is, I'm going to now finally put a patch into the Swiss cheese uh, floor panels either side. So I've got my first patch panel um, cut out. Now, uh, I'd made my basic cardboard template. Using the plasma is really cheating. It makes things so quick and easy. I, I could have cut this out with the angle grinder or whatever, but these complicated shapes um, probably would have been easier with tin snips, but I have left my uh, tin snips somewhere else. So I used the plasma and it worked well. Um, 
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, on this panel, it actually has a raised edge and it actually uh, changes shape. And I've drawn it on here. So um, this lower edge is, uh, this, this piece stays lower and this piece here is, is sits up a little bit higher. So I need to get this profile into it. Um, and uh, I've been watching a bit of Make It Custom, uh, another really good channel, uh, doing hot rod builds if you want to learn how to do sheet metal stuff. Um, he's he's uh, really informative on that. And uh, he uses the bead roller to tip the edge and just to get that, that sort of crease started that you can work from. Now, I need to get some better rollers. At the moment, I've only got sort of offset rollers on, the, uh, on my bead roller, but uh, actually having something like a... Um, uh, like, like a, a sharp roller and then a rubber roller on the bottom will actually just let you push a bead into a, a push a, uh, a fold into a piece of sheet. Uh, I don't have that, but I'm going to make do with what I've got. And let's see if I can actually tip some edges in and then try and sort of hammer it out flat because obviously it's going to warp things and change things. But if I can actually, uh, if it'll work the way I hope it works, I should be able to manipulate it all and get it back uh, looking pretty good. Well, that worked really well. So you can see I've got a really good step in here that I managed to put in with the bead roller and uh, and then a bit of hammering flat, a bit of sort of tweaking because uh, it does, I do need to sort of shrink this corner to bring it around, uh, but a bit of stretching, a bit of shrinking, a bit of hammering and uh, we have that shape I need for the floor. So that is the first bit looking pretty good. So uh, what I might do is I might actually cut out and tack this in now and then I can work out there's a couple other bits that I need but it was going to be too hard to make it in one piece so let's put this in to start with. So it wasn't the neatest patch I've ever done, but uh, particularly so, so the edges aren't absolutely perfect, but uh, I'm not concerned about that at all. This is obviously all gonna be well and truly hidden under the carpet, but the shape is still all in there as it was. Uh, I am quite happy. So we need to move now over to the other side and do the same thing again.
All right, so again, same as I did on uh, this side. Um, I've gone through, I've punched my hole, I made my shape, I bent a little bit of a seam. And this is where my microphone battery went flat. But uh, as you can see, I once I got the seam in it, I actually got myself some of these sandbags and using the sandbags and the plastic mallets that come with it. This is my first time using them, but I might go into a bit more detail about the sandbags in a future episode. So I started beating out the shape and stretching the metal to try and get this uh, extreme curves that I need to uh, match in with the body. And I used a bit of the shrinker stretcher as well. So let's go and see how it fits and uh, see if we can put it in the car. All right, and we have this uh, whole floor is now patched up, although you can see there are still some holes over here that need to be patched uh, later. There's also a, a hole here that needs to be patched. So it's not completely done, but uh, that is at least done for today. So my seam welding video doesn't look like it actually ended up being a seam welding video because I just did not get a chance to finish this off at all. Um, the patches took a long time, particularly being those complex shapes. It was, uh, it was actually good having a go. I, I like trying to build these complex shapes because it, um, it sort of, it, it stretches my, uh, my knowledge and I get better at doing these things as I go, which I, I really enjoy doing. So, uh, that, that was quite, uh, quite rewarding, but I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1966 saw Ferrari create one of the lesser known and more interesting concept cars of the day. The Ferrari 365P Berlinetta Speciale, or as it was also known, the Berlinetta Tre Posti, was a mid-engine three-seater road car with centre steering, so the steering wheel was in the middle of the car. And this was created 30 years before McLaren invented its legendary F1. Similar to the McLaren, the 365P's driver's seat is slightly forward of the other two passengers and it has the gear stick or the gear selector slightly to the right of the driver's seat. This was also the first purpose-built Ferrari branded mid-engine road car. This was fitted with a 4.4 litre Colombo V12, which was placed longitudinally behind the seat with a five-speed transaxle, which was taken from some 365P2 race cars. Only two of these cars were built, with one going to US importer Luigi Canetti, who I've mentioned previously, and the other one going to the head of Fiat. The white US car went to auction in 2014, but was passed in at a high bid of $23.5 million. All right, another week where I don't seem to get much done, but uh, at least I have fixed those rust holes that people have been nagging me about for quite some time. Every time I show the underside of the car, it's like, yeah, you're doing this, but you're gonna fix the rust holes. So at least I've got those bits done. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just another thing ticked off of, the, uh, off of the long, long list I've had on this car. So uh, I keep saying it, but we, we are getting there very, very slowly. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. But like we say this every time, we reiterate the same thing, but it's just, yeah. It's all, it's all part of the process. This is not a, uh, a slap together build. Uh, it's not, no, not what, I, not no, what not. I want to do. I, I, I'm, I'm happy taking my time. <laughs> <laughs> I, want it, I want it done as right as I can do it. So that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Very, very noble. Um, yeah. Like and subscribe if you, and if you want to see the videos a day early, follow Jeff on Facebook. Um, no, not on Facebook, on Patreon. Yes. And you get to see them without any ads. Patreon, you get to see them a day early without any ads. <laughs> yep. Facebook, you can also see them, but not a day early. No. And not the full video. No, I do other stuff on Facebook and Instagram, which gives you tips and tr tips of, gives you tips of what's coming up. 
Uh, well, I think I we're feel, both quite tongue-tied this very, week. We're very tired this week, and I feel like we've both. started to lose the power of logical speech, so we might just say goodbye for yeah, now. Yeah, I, I think we'll call it quits week. while we're behind. <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Hey, guys, Ferrari in 1966. No. Hey, guys, in 1966. No, 66. <laughs> hey, guys. <sighs> Ferrari create one of the more interesting... So Ferrari create one of the... My mouth feels really wooden, like I'm like, ah, rah, rah. The, the 365 Berlinetta P uh, with a center road drive, so steering wheel in the middle of the car. Center drive, not center road drive. <gasps> or as it was also known, the Tre Posti, that Berlinetta Tre Posti, <laughs> placed longitudinally behind the seats where it was cosseted and nurtured by a five-speed transaxle taken from some road cars. <laughs> from a race car or something. <laughs> close enough. Good enough. Close <laughs> enough. Close enough, he's good enough.